What up, Marsh Pod? Friday, we're back in the saddle. Big news, big week for coaches. We had the, if depending on when you want to start your week, I started on Sunday. We have coaches getting their first podcast. We get some back and forth with the coaches regarding a departure of Nick Hugo. Uh, and then, of course, we cap it off with conduct detrimental to the league from Coach Heesh. What does this all mean, man? Here's, I'm not going to comment too much on the on the investigation. I don't know much, right? I don't know much in terms of of what the investigation entails. I'm not breaking news on this podcast on any of it, but I'm noticing a thread. And here's what I here's what I do know about the investigation. There are some concerns from from what I've been told. There's been concerns from representatives about the communication style of Cochise. I think that's part of what's going on here. There's there's some concerns about the way in which business is handled. And look, that's not a surprise if you know Cochise. He stepped in day one, said he was winning Sim World Hoops race to one next season. He has a unique way of communicating. But I think that formula of communication is alienating players and I say that because it's a common thread from what happened earlier in the week with Coach Nick Hugo. And it's a thread that has been similarly in place with coaches like uh, Javad Storm and Coach, I might get the name wrong, Coach King in the North. There was a glaring lack of communication between player and coach. Some of that across the board, and this is not as specific to Coach Heesh, but some of that across the board is on the players and some of it is on the coach. That's the concern right now, is that perception is becoming reality for coaches that choose to recruit heavily at the expense of recruiting internally. Why did Nick Hugo leave leave run DMV. It's not because Coach Banks wasn't involved in bringing players in. From everything I've been told, he was. I expect to see on October 1st signings of players going to run DMV, and I know that there were players that were interested in going to run DMV. But he was unable to retain Nick Hugo because he did not maintain communication within his locker room, right, within his players. That I can verify from the folks that I've talked to that I have much respect and and belief in what they say, that I can verify. I think, I assume, that's very similar with Coach Heesh. He's recruiting. Uh, There's no doubt that there are a number of players that I think are interested in joining Gulf Coast Lockdown, both before today and after today. We're recording this Thursday night. Some of it because of today, right? But it's obvious that players are leaving, right? We have news. De'Aaron Cruz has said he's leaving. That's glaring. That's your top scorer from a year ago. He decides he doesn't want to come back. Akeem Young, when Coach Hyman left to coach the North, he said, hey, I don't think I want to be in Gulf Coast. Now, we don't have any more news on Akeem Young. We don't know where he might be going. But he also wanted out. Why? Because I assume Coach Heim, excuse me, sorry, Coach Heim, Coach Heesh is not engaging with those existing players. He's not communicating with them. I'm not advocating that these coaches go to their players and say, hey, I'm thinking of recruiting this guy, yes or no. The I hate this because it goes, it gets the wrong connotation, but the prisoners are not running the jail, right? But at the same time, Coaches should have some responsibility to maintain communication with their players. We talked about it on Wednesday. Who are the most respected players in this or coaches in this league? The ones that we have record of being highly engaged with their team, highly communicative with their team. I think that's the challenge that Coach Heesh runs into. And I think across the board, coaches that fail to make that connection are destined to fail in general you're going to begin to get perceptions that will 
bleed into reality, as it's quickly becoming with Coach Ish, that are detrimental to you, the player, let alone the league. Forget the league. You, the, you, the, you, the coach. It's detrimental to. That's where I think coaches as a whole need to take a step back and look and say, these concerns that people have, this investigation that's in, this losing of players that I have suffered from, it's not the player's fault. Across the board, it's not going to be always the player's fault. If you're not engaging and communicating with your team, guess what? They're going to be out the door. And I think that's the challenge that has plagued uh, some of these, these coaches all in the span of the last 72 hours. One final note, I found this interesting. I was looking at the feed and and trying to understand how did this Nick Hugo thing get to where it did on Wednesday? And I looked and and the news was announced on Tuesday that he was, I think it was he was considering he might leave or something along those lines. Or yeah, late late Tuesday, hey, he might be out. All of the messages, all of the public comments from players were supportive. Congrats. Good luck. Heck, Coach Banks even chimed in. Good luck. Across the board, it was positive. Then the following day, it's announced, hey, he's, he's he is leaving. He's in fact leaving. And we later find out he's going elsewhere. And all the comments were again positive until Coach Trayton chimed in and said, hey, uh, I don't think we have all the facts here. And this player might be making a bad move. And suddenly the tide switched. And you started to see a ton of coaches start jumping on and protecting Coach Banks. And at the expense of this becoming like Nick Hugo is a diva, it led to Rick Blaze chiming in with the Hugo rules. None of that existed prior to the coaches chiming in. Yet now, a day later, you see the exact opposite sentiment from these coaches. They are saying, hey, Coach Heesh, this is terrible. You can't be doing this. Where are we going to come to some conclusion from a coaching standpoint, or a not a coaching standpoint, but a, a personality standpoint of what's okay and what's not okay? Because right now, the coaches are striking two very different lines. And let me close by saying this. I have immense respect for each and every one of them. I'm not saying they were right to a key to to protect and support Coach Banks or they're wrong to do the opposite for Coach Heesh. That's not what I'm saying. All that I'm saying is something I've said before. We often say the media drives stuff to be this. The media creates a narrative. Kind of kind of the coaches on this one, man. I mean, the coaches kind of did it, not the media. That's all I'm saying. Love them all. They're going to be in my DMs. They're going to be saying something about it. I get it. I love them. I think they're great at what they do. But the coaches are the media now. If they're stirring up drama, talk to you Monday. Monday.